Yoshi's hatched from an egg, right? Oh god, wait, does that mean on Yoshi's Island we're destroying little Yoshis? Yeah, I feel a calling to save as many of these guys as possible. So let's answer the question. Can you beat Yoshi's Island without eggs? The rules of the run are simple. We cannot pick up eggs at all and we cannot destroy eggs. While I could get rid of any picked up eggs by falling in a pit, the fall would also likely break the egg, breaking the spirit of the run and thus why it's off limits. While most of the game is based around us throwing eggs, I'm sure we can hatch up a plan to bypass these requirements. So let's begin. The tutorial level starts by teaching us the basics of movements and only requires us to walk and jump to get to the end. 1-1 is titled Make Eggs Throw Eggs, implying we'll need them. While it tries to teach us how to do it, there's no penalty for skipping the text suggestions. There's a cloud here we need to trigger to get up and you normally hit it with an egg. However, we can spit out an enemy to trigger it as well and that's the only real section that would require an egg in 1-1. Into 1-2 and we get stopped pretty early by a bunch of dirt. Normally you'd use an egg to get past the dirt, but unlike the clouds, enemies can't break this. That's okay, we've got a backup strat. If you're on the level selection menu, you can hold select and press X, X, Y, B, and then A to unlock an extra menu with mini battles. Defeating these mini battles gives you extra items and you can do these an unlimited number of times. For 1-2, we need to complete the seed spitting battle and get a green melon specifically. It could drop fire or ice melons too, but those generally won't be as useful as the standard melons. If we use our newly acquired melon in 1-2, we can use the seeds to break the dirt and hold up to break the dirt holding the bounce pad. The rest of the level is an easy clear without needing any eggs. Level 1-3 doesn't require eggs, it can be cleared easily. 1-4 is up next. Clearing this level doesn't require any tricks. However, the 4th and 8th stages of each world we get bosses and this one presents a major issue. There are no enemies around and a plant spits eggs out. We have no way of dealing damage without using these eggs. But that doesn't mean we're stuck yet. See, speedrunners figured out ways to skip these bosses long ago using a wrong warp. Essentially, in certain stage transitions, if you are in the transition area but not at the expected pixel coordinates, the game will wrong warp you back to stage 1-1. Normally, you'd need an egg for this wrong warp because when you get hit by the enemies, Baby Mario will get pushed in the direction you're aiming. If he's aimed to the right, this lets you jump above the loading trigger and collect Mario a bit higher than the devs intended. But without the egg, you'd aim Mario to the left, meaning you couldn't get above the stage transition when collecting him. However, if you get hit at the bottom instead of the top as the enemy comes around, Mario will be pushed in the right direction even without an egg, and you can successfully perform the wrong warp. Being in 1-1 again might not seem useful, but if we clear it like normal, the game will complete the level that we selected in the level select screen, and not the one that you just finished. So for all the game knows, we just cleared 1-4, and this means 1-5 unlocks. 1-5 is an auto-scroller and doesn't require any eggs. 1-6 has two balloons we need to pop, but there are plenty of enemies to spit at them. There's a secret area later in the stage with a cloud and an egg. If you use a melon to get the cloud, you get the mole power up. However, they overlap, making this seem like you couldn't get through. It is possible, though, to jump from above and hit the power-up before the egg, and as long as you're in the mole form, you won't grab the egg, letting you get some extra red coins. 1-7 Touch Fuzzy Get Dizzy is the classic Yoshi Nip level, but doesn't pose a problem without eggs. That said, this level does have an infinite life glitch where you can spit an enemy over this pipe and stand on this ledge. If you set your controller down and sip tea, you'll get quite a few lives off the enemies that spawn and instantly get destroyed. And for the big boss of World 1, we enter 1-8. The level itself is quite straightforward, and while you think we might opt for a wrong warp, we can actually defeat this boss. See, if you don't have any eggs, enemies will drop and you can spit them at him until he goes down. Into World 2, we start in 2-1, and this level introduces some tougher platforming with falling blocks, but doesn't require any tricks if you're eggless. Worth noting, though, is that you might want to avoid the Poochie as he likes to run you directly into eggs and cause you to pick them up. 2-2 starts with a cloud that we don't have an enemy to spit, but melons will work once again. There's also a section with a star trap behind dirt, but we can crack it open with a green melon seed and turn into Super Baby Mario to clear the rest of the level as intended. 2-3 has quite a lot of enemies at the beginning, making it a bit trickier without eggs, but nothing we can't force our way through. The underground section, though, presents a major issue. After clearing the dirt in the passage with a melon, we find some eggs laying in a space too tight to jump over. I tried to scroll the screen to despawn these, but they seem positioned just too far apart to despawn. 
Apparently, this was more common knowledge, but I was proud of figuring out that you could tongue at the egg and then move it back to prevent picking it up. It's a bit tricky, but you could manage to get both of these eggs out of the way and make it to the next section, which we can clear with another melon. The rest of the stage is cleared normally, and they even give melons to clear the dirt ahead. 2-4 is pretty simple overall, though we do need to use a melon for the cloud, and any of the melon types will work for these. However, when we hit the boss room, we run into an issue. Even though we have enemies in the room for the large boo, he goes invisible when we face him and try to spit them. And beyond that, I don't think the bats would deal damage anyways. So instead of that, there's actually another wrong warp we can use. You can bait a boobla over near this pipe and then hop on it before entering. Since the boobla pushes Yoshi up a few pixels, this triggers a 1-1 warp. And before you get the idea that we could just wrong warp anywhere, these can't be performed on just any loading zone and only work on the areas the devs were asleep at the will. In 2-5, we immediately run into a plant that spits eggs and we're required to go past. This one proved to be quite tricky to get past, but if you run as an egg passes by your height, you should be able to get through. There's also a second one of these later, but since the ground is flat, it's a bit easier to get past. The last section did give me trouble though with the enemies too, but we can use melons to clear them out instead of eggs. 2-6 is up next, and after ground pounding through dirt, we need a melon to get a door from this cloud. Inside, we can use another green melon to shoot up the second vertical gap to get to the next door, and then the rest of the level we can clear as normal. 2-7 presents no challenge and is cleared easily. 2-8 marks the end of World 2, and as with almost every boss stage in this run, this also presents an issue. Actually, before we do this stage, we need to grind out some green melons, and fire and ice ones won't work. The main issue is these spiked logs on wheels. We hit not one, not two, but three of these things that need melons to rotate. Even further in, there's a spike we need to break, and spinning an enemy out won't actually break this, so we have to use a melon. Luckily, once this is clear, our way to the boss is no longer impeded, and he doesn't require any special work since we just push him off the edge. With World 2 complete, let's jump straight into World 3. 3-1 is loaded with monkeys, and while dodging them all can be difficult, there are no special requirements to clear this stage without eggs. 3-2, Jungle Rhythm. Moving through the stage, we can get through like normal, except for needing a melon for this cloud to unlock a stairway. There's an eggplant we need to avoid, but it's almost entirely off the path, making getting through fairly trivial. 3-3 is a bit harder, requiring us to bypass an eggplant right near the beginning and spend a melon or two for a few clouds. While we do get the helicopter and submarine Yoshi, once we're through these sections, we hit a frog with an egg and be extra careful getting the checkpoint as to not pick up the egg. There's quite a number of enemies too, but we can avoid a lot by trying to hover over as many as possible till we reach the end. 3-4 starts us immediately in an eggplant, meaning just getting started requires immediate reaction to move away from the direction the egg gets spit. We can pick up an enemy shy guy to hit the cloud shortly after. Through the first door, there's a dirt section requiring a green melon to clear. Just watch for the spinning spike ball, and then we're mostly clear to the next door. A bit further down, we need another melon to get a cloud. Just use a standard one as the distance isn't short enough for the ice or fire ones. Nothing else special except the fact that the frogs can't be frozen or flamed, making us a bit more careful getting through the last room. As for the boss himself, we get swallowed by the frog and get quite lucky as the game gives us Shy Guys to spit back, letting us clear this boss easily. 3-5 we load in and oh boy, that screams loads of melon farming. Luckily though, a lot of the monkeys drop half-eaten melons and this is only the first room, so we only need to bring one or two melons in for safety. The next room's platforming is a bit tricky, but the real kicker is the checkpoint. It is okay to get it, but this means if we need to restart from it, we'll need to react immediately to avoid the eggs. Luckily though, the rest of the level is pretty easy if you stay higher up. Comparatively, 3-6 is a breeze if you grab the key early on and flutter to get to the locked door. 3-7 is also pretty simple, not even requiring melons. And 3-8 starts us off with this thing blocking the tunnel, and while I experimented with using the Shy Guys to push him back, it wound up requiring a melon to get past the first one. Melons also let us get past the second version of this guy, and the piranhas that block our path a bit further down. As for dealing with the big bad boss piranha, it seems like we might be required to use eggs, but if we hold one of the enemies in Yoshi's mouth until he gets done charging, we can stand on the second and third stones from the edge and spit it back to get a hit in, letting us clear him without any eggs. Halfway through and another half to go. 4-1 starts off without issue, but I did see an interesting flashing flying shy guy. Yeah, I'm not sure what he was doing. Later in the level, we need to get a star trap behind dirt, but once again we can use melon seeds here, letting us finish the level without an egg. 
Four Dash 2 has one section with two piranhas, but we can grab nearby enemies to take them out. In the underground, there's an egg on the ground, but it's easily hopped over and the rest of the stage has no obstacles for us. On to 4 3, where we take to the skies with balloons. Just be cautious getting off of these numbered platforms as it's easy to hit the eggs with your hover. The second area has an eggplant, but we can skip it by using a melon seed to go up, then riding a balloon to the end. Ah, uh, the boss stage is always causing issues, and I read it 4 4 more than a few times. Once you get inside Milt's Fort, you'll want a load of melon seeds here. We need any melon type just to enter, but then have four doors and need to collect four keys. On the bottom left, we can use seeds to knock down the bucket and get the key. On the top left, we need to drill our way through the dirt to get number two. On the bottom right one, we need another melon to trigger the cloud for key number three. The top right is a bit harder though, so we need a melon to get past these blocks and the dirt, but we also need to jump and avoid the eggs that fall. There is enough room to do so, but if an enemy takes Mario back through the eggs, it might force you to game over. And since we can't checkpoint after each key, this will really eat through your melons. After all four keys, we get lucky with the boss that can just ground pound him, not requiring anything special. 4-5 was a breeze as it's basically just pushing a boulder. 4-6 though, we don't get so lucky. It's a seemingly innocent stage except this eggplant and crab combo. Yeah, going forward past this is doable, but unfortunately we need to go up. The tactic I opted for was patiently watching the egg direction and then hopping directly up as soon as I had an opening. There's a second eggplant further up, and we still need to avoid the lower eggs at the peak of their height. We also need to use a melon to bore through this dirt quickly before either getting an egg or hit by the crab and losing Mario. I got a bit lucky and the Shy Guys brought Mario back to me, but this section was a real pain. Luckily, the rest of the stage went by easily. 4-7 is just some moving platforms and doesn't require eggs, but this is an important stage and we'll be returning to this one later. 4-8 is another boss, so immediately I expected it to be hard. Getting through the stage mostly just requires melons to break things until the boss room. There is a small section where I thought we needed to tongue these eggs out of the way, but it turns out there's a spot on the right side where you can just directly jump up. Oh right, you're probably wondering what that strange sprite I have is. Well, see, the Koopa boss on 4-8 doesn't give us any enemies, and the only way to beat him is to hit him with eggs. Additionally, there doesn't seem to be an existing 1-1 warp in 4-8, and I couldn't find a new one either. So instead, there's this neat little trick that speedrunners do called a Baxter. In short, it lets you throw an egg over the end goal and give it to the next Yoshi. So how's that helpful for us? Remember 4-7? Well, 4-7 had these little dudes called Huffin' Puffins, or sometimes called chickens. We'll call them chickens. You can throw them like an egg and they return, but they're not an egg. But we can apply this backstream method to carry one with us to another level. Normally, you'd still need an egg to backster a chicken, but it is possible to do it without the egg. In short, you'll need to get a few of the chickens and then throw one when you're getting off the last moving platform of the stage. I won't go too far into the technical details behind this, but despawning that chicken basically means we no longer have what the game considers sprite number one, leaving us chickens number two through four. If we throw chicken number two towards the flower, then hold chicken three and run to the goal and cancel our throw on the same frame we enter the goal zone, this will cause the next Yoshi to pick up the chicken and carry it to the next stage. Now, with the chicken with us, we can enter 4-8 and get back to the Koopa. Just make sure that you don't get hit or you'll need to do the Baxter again. Since we can throw chickens like eggs, this allows us to take down the big Koopa and clear the end of World 4. 5-1 has some icicles that are blocking the way, but melons can take them out. Rolling the snowball in early 5-2 is no issue, and the second section we just... Well, that's an issue. I checked for any known wrong warps, but didn't see any, so I thought of a method that might work. Moving back to the minigames, we can get an item that we haven't used yet, which is a wing cloud. This might not seem helpful, but if we push the snowball to where we need it, we kill all enemies as a consequence. I did try to push a spiky over the snowball, but that didn't work. So if instead we use a wing cloud item, we can push the snowball and leave an enemy alive. Going towards the transition of the stage, we will despawn the clouds, letting the enemies return to the normal farm, but the snowball keeps its place. So we pop an item for more stars, then use the enemy and try to wrong warp, and... Unfortunately, this zone won't wrong warp. I really tried to find a way past this egg, but I couldn't come up with any idea that worked, as when we hit the stage transition, we don't have the ability to use any controls, not even the pause menu. So unfortunately, this is our first egg pickup, meaning no, we can't clear the whole game without eggs. But let's see what else is required in case we could in the future find a way past this. 
The rest of 5-2 we can clear easily without an egg, and if we go to another stage like 1-2 then die, then go back to the level select, we have somehow magically lost the egg that was following us. In 5-3 we can use an enemy to knock a bucket down and then we have to dodge another eggplant. We can use a green melon to get past the spikies on the ice path and then we can clear the rest of the stage easily since it's a skiing section. Boss stage 5-4 is up and this one will get tricky. Using our melons we can get the clouds and progress through the stage. There is one eggplant at the top of some stairs, but this one is a bit easier to dodge than the one we just did in 5-3. I thought I was stuck for a moment at this cloud over some spikes, but it turns out we could just jump across. Immediately when we enter the boss room, we need to bolt away since there's an eggplant by the door. As for the boss himself, we don't have anything to work with inside the room, so we'll need another method. There is a known wrong warp in this spike section, but after a lot of trial and error, I don't think it's possible to do with a melon instead of an egg. See, with a melon we can't shoot directly down and we need to hover into the bottom of the pipe to do the 1-1 warp. So why not use chicken backs do you say? That's a great idea. So after setting up and getting back to the boss, I found out that if you try to throw the chicken at him like an egg, it doesn't seem to be able to hit his heart. As it turns out, even though the chicken doesn't have as much force, if you run, jump, and throw, you can get it far enough to hit the heart. But there's an issue. This will frequently cause the chicken to run away even if you don't hit his heart. This boss requires 4 hits to a heart and it takes about 3 perfect throws to expose it with the chicken. It took a lot of reattempts, but I was able to get this boss down with the single chicken we got from stage 4-7. 5-5 is quite easy and 5-6 is generally simple, just avoid the eggs from these guys that throw them. And 5-7 doesn't require any and is also pretty easy. Into another boss now with 5-8. The castle leading up to the boss is pretty easy, though we'll need a couple of melons to clear these blocks. As for the boss himself, this one never required eggs, only ground pounding, which makes this an easy stage. Now we're into the last world and only one egg pickup so far. 6-1 doesn't require eggs for any sections, though we do have a bit of a tricky eggplant to get around. Just run in between the egg throws when it's about Yoshi's screen height. 6-2 contains an egg thrower, but we can perfect flutter off the top of this egg block which will let you avoid him altogether. Instead of a melon, you can just bump your head on the dirt to get Super Baby Mario near the end. And while you're in Baby Mario form, you won't pick up eggs from the throwers, so we can clear the rest with ease. 6-3 has a section with the fuzzies that have eggs on the mushroom tops, but we can flutter over them. I didn't know this before this run, but these spinning locks can actually bounce you upwards and there's a secret upper bit of this stage. If you take it, then exit the other door, the rest of the stage goes by without issue. Second to the last boss now is 6-4, which is Tap Tap. First issue here is the piranha with the egg platforms, but it turns out we can just jump over. There's also a mini boss for a key beneath an eggplant, but we can dodge them easily and take him out with a melon. We need to take another of these guys down with a second melon for another key to unlock the pipe leading to the boss. As for the actual boss, we don't need to deal damage to him, we need to destroy the ground. There's also two eggplants we need to avoid, and as you might guess, this one's a bit of a pain. We need to Baxter again to get the chicken for this level. We can use him to clear out the blocks beneath the boss, but he does like to run away or break the one directly under us. But with some perseverance, we can dig him down. 6-5 is an auto-scroller with a single issue, which is an egg with icicles over it that the stage pushes us into. Luckily, we can use a melon to knock the icicles down and then hop over. 6-6 -6 is very lengthy, but we can cut some of the length off at this section. Drag an enemy over and you can flutter jump up and get to a door, letting you skip most of the level and make it trivial. 6-7 is probably the most annoying level in the run. We need to ride a moving platform that has an eggplant on it. It's possible to dodge these by moving back and forth while standing on it, but it is super annoying and difficult. The early section you can flutter away to alleviate some of the difficulty, but the later platform we need to actually dodge while riding and avoiding enemies. We can skip some of it on ground, but if you get too far ahead, it will despawn. Once up, the rest of the level is trivial. And the final stage, 6-8. I decided to take a chicken in ahead of time. Our first issue is getting into the castle with the rotating doors. We need to get past an eggplant, then use a melon to knock a door down. All four are possible to clear without eggs, but I got door one here. The platforming is a little difficult, but the most annoying part is the eggplant over the lava here. After dodging it, we need to melon seed these blocks while continuing to dodge eggs. Once ready to go past the spikes, we can turn to make Mario go past them and invincibility our way through. Finally, we get to Baby Bowser, who we only need to ground pound to take down. Afterwards, he turns into a big Bowser and we lose our chicken. 
As far as I can tell, there are no wrong warps in any of the doors, and you can't get the chicken into this fight. So we need to break our first eggs on the very last stage, and we need seven to take him down and complete the run. Our final counter is seven broken eggs and eight picked up total, which, considering all the levels and expected requirements, I think is quite good. There may be a way past the egg in 5-2 with some really technical glitches, but I don't see an existing method that could get us past Bowser. That said, if you have ideas or think there's a way past, I'd love to hear in the comments as I would really like to know. For now, I think Yoshi can finally be allowed to have eggs again and we can set our sights towards the next run. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing, liking, or dropping a comment as it really helps out. And if you want to see another run, I'd suggest this Kirby Air Ride run without eating enemies. I'm Glitch the Box Links, and I'll see you in the next Out of the Box Challenge.